Sag, welcome to your full moon energy read. The next full moon will be under the sign of Scorpio, April 23rd or thereabouts, depending on where you are in the world. Let's talk about it. This energy read will be good for the next 30 days or so, you know, under that particular influence. What is going on? What's going on, please, for Sagittarius under the full moon? Show me Sag. Okay. The tower for some of you. I hope it's not too strong, although I don't know. The full moon in Scorpio can be quite the, you know what, deep emotions, long overdue for transformation, discovery, all that uh, fun, shadowy stuff. Mm. What's going on, please? Show me Sag under the moon. Show me Sagittarius, please, under the full moon. Okay. Let's do that one more time. Show me Sagittarius, please, under the full moon. Like always, take what resonates, leave what does not. And if there's more than one energy clearly apparent to you on this board today, then you reverse those energies as you see fit. These are, after all, general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate at all, which is frustrating but normal. Okay, check your other placements. You'll find yourself in there somewhere. Okay, crowning you, the magician, uh, the devil, mm, strength, two of wands, the moon. Oh, how appropriate. Okay. There's something here I see that you want, but you don't know if it's correct. If it's coming from a bad place, is that desire coming from a bad place? So to your credit, you do want to do the right thing. You have four, <laughs> four majors and a five card draw. Right there at the heart of the reading is indeed the moon. So influencing you now, of course. And while you do want something, you are desirous of it, the magician, devil. There is an admission here with strength under the, all this that says, and the two of wands. Why do I want this? Is it for good reasons? Is it for not so good reasons? Why am I trying to pull this towards me exactly? That's why we need to take a look at the moon at the heart of your reading. So we're going to start right there. Show me that moon, please. Show me the moon for Sag. Show me the moon, please. Show me the moon, show me the moon, show me the moon. Six of cups, ten of cups, page of cups. Can I open my heart to something lovely and bountiful and harmonious? Why is it under your moon? Why would that need to be under your moon? These are all lovely right here. Six of cups, ten of cups, page of cups. Little guy. Can I open up towards this? Why would you need to question that? Under your heart's desire. An emotional secret. Nothing's been done. Let's make that clear. It's an emotional suspension of could I? Do I really want this? I don't know. It's almost like you don't dare admit it to yourself that I would love to open up to all this lovely loveliness that is, well, frankly, just love, but also underneath that particular umbrella that is the Ten of Cups. So the Ten of Cups is like the umbrella. Okay. These are the people in our lives that have some sort of emotional value to us. Okay. Out of that sense of umbrella is a specific connection, Six of Cups, that represents if either a soul bond, someone whom we've known a long time, memories that are unique in that particular connection. It's like, do I dare open my heart up to all this? I don't know. Do you dare? And if so, why are you afraid of it? Oh, I can't wait to see your devil. Because uh, you are manifesting, so let's be aware of that, yeah? You can say it's unknown to you and unknown to you. Okay, that's the problem with the moon. So long as it remains hidden to ourselves, we won't allow ourselves to fully acknowledge what we're feeling, thinking, etc. We will go around manifesting, dressing our manifestations up as something else with the real intent behind it. 
which means if it does come towards you, there's a good chance you'll reject it if you don't understand what it means to you and that you want this in your life. So just FYI. All right, let's see that magician. Let's see the magician, please. Show me the magician. Show me that magician, please. Show me the magician. Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, Three of Swords. What you're manifesting is a much stronger sense of self, independence, financial freedom, okay? Um, identity. Something that you say you've been missing with the Three of Swords for a while. There's something in you that craves more autonomy. This is on the surface. You can see it. You see it on the surface. That's easy. That's the easy part. The unregistered emotional motivation behind it. Okay. That's what I want you to be more aware of. You're striving for independence. You're striving for autonomy. You're saying you've been missing those things. That's what you're consciously manifesting. I want more of me. My own experience. My own sense of resourcefulness. My own sense of willpower and experience. And, and it, You're saying you've been aching for this. You seem to think what you are longing for which you don't really acknowledge under the moon, which is quite substantial, is to be part of something very large, but also unique and beautiful that loves you. That's under your moon. How it comes out in the 3D is, I just need more autonomy. I just, I just need more strength of self. I just need more experience. I just, I need more. I need more. You, it's like I'm, you're, you're gathering all the 3D resources that you can to prove who you are in the real world. I think who you are in the real world is actually quite proven. <laughs> quite solid a figure you are he's saying i just need more independence i just need more proof i just i just need more proof of my own existence i need more acknowledgement i need more just give me more give me more labors give me more skills and and uh, it's kind of like if i add more to myself i will create more uh, of an identity honey your identity is established the 3d part what you seem to be comfortable with what you're not comfortable with is your emotional self and what you actually crave there. But it comes out on the surface as, I need more responsibility. I need more resources. And that will set me free, right? All the labors and the coin and my mastery sense of self and skills and experience, that, more of that for me, please. And maybe that, that weird sort of ache I can't identify, maybe that will go away. It's not true. That's not true. I think your 3D world's quite established. You look like someone who's high functioning, but there's still the ache in there with the three swords. Are you afraid of rejection? That if you try to pursue that emotional wish, that emotional secret of yours, it will take away from your sense of accomplished self in the 3D if you fully embraced your moon's desire. If I really wanted that full emotional landscape, Christina, it might reject me. But the 3D world won't. I'm too much of a valuable player. I see. Like I said, you're much more comfortable in the 3D. What you can see, control, and take part in, right? That's, that's your lane. Am I right? And then there's that another lane that you've never really tried that requires you to really emotionally invest. Is that why you feel achy on the inside? And you think, if I just add more responsibility to myself, I'll be better defined and I won't have that emo emotional chasm. Okay. Because, uh, let me tell you, in that 3D, honey, I don't think you can add much more responsibility to yourself. <laughs> you look so bright and shiny in my eyes. Whatever happens in 3D, you make it happen. You're very accomplished. Some of you have a couple of titles attached to you. That's how strong that impression is. More coin, more titles. Never fully eradicates that sense of achiness. So you try to accomplish more and more. The magician's there. It's like, I know how to do this one. I know you do. It's 
It's like the 3D world can't reject me. I've made myself too important. I see that. You're good. You're good in the 3D. You don't trust your emotional self. Let's see that devil. As some folks really like how I say it, devil. <laughs> Somebody actually took the time to spell it out phonetically so I could see it. And I was like, oh, wow, that makes so much sense. <laughs> I've never thought to spell it out the way I say it. But now that I've seen it that way, it's like, oh, wow, I think it was they spelled it devil. Yeah, I think it was D-E-A-H-H-V-I-L. And it's like that. I think that was it. Like that. That makes a lot of sense. So let's see that. Let's see that devil. Let's see the devil, please. Show me that devil. Show me the devil. Show me the devil. Again, the devil. We all have one. <laughs> we all have a devil. How big and scary and strong he is depends on how much he has fed our insecurities and fears. Patterns and things like that. But more to the point, the inability to recognize it. That's why he's allowed to thrive. The stuff we turn a blind eye to. Let's see that devil. Nine of Swords, Anxiety. Ten of Swords, Two of Wands, You Fear Hurt. Let's make that clear. You have a pattern of fearing pain. I saw it briefly attached to you. And it's like the more I can attach to myself in terms of responsibility and immerse myself in the 3D world, I cannot be rejected. And yet the fear lingers, doesn't it? The fear of the unknown. What is that, my friend? Full immersion into the love that you wish and desire for yourself that not, isn't only protective with the Ten of Cups, but also uniquely imprinted to you and just to you. Your mind, when it comes to the personal self on the inside, the one that cannot be demonstrated to the 3D, your mind has a tendency to hijack the entire conversation, and that devil is well fed in this respect. Because you fear inherently of rejection, okay, you made it a point to overcompensate in your 3D and downplaying your emotional needs. I don't need that, and I don't desire that. I don't desire a huge comprehensive emotional structure that is the Ten of Cups, and I don't desire a sweet, unique, soul bond type of love, all that. Never mind all that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double down in my 3D world where it makes sense, and I cannot be lost, right? I will make myself too important and too needed to be lost. It's kind of like you're showing me too big to fail. But when it comes to your personal self, you, you do yourself a huge disservice because that devil's well fed on the fear of your thoughts, my friend. Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, Two of Wands. You have, again, it's not an accusation. This is the side I'm looking at today. If you take it as an offense, I cannot help you. It's the card. So this is something. How much insight you have on this, I don't know, but you can't tell me you're not familiar with the feeling. That intense psychological anxiety for making the wrong decision. That's what this is. What if I make the wrong decision? I'm seeing the worst fears of your mind. And this is your particular devil's story that is known very well. If you have so much as a provocation of fear of rejection, you will not make decisions that are personal to you on the inside. Outside world, done. No problem. Like I said, you're sad, I'm showing me you're too big to fail. You make sure that wherever it is you are, people know your name, what your worth is, all that stuff, your resourcefulness, responsibility. You make sure you are not lost in the 3D hum that is life. You made sure that your 3D world, you cannot be rejected. You're that person who knows everybody. You do almost everything. Or you were familiar with this, that, and the other. Right? But because you cannot guarantee from the Sage's point of view. And I'm, I know you have rhyme and reason. It's called a backstory. It's called an origin story. We all have one. That's why I always recommend getting familiar with your origin story. For your particular origin story, you're saying emotional investment has not gone well for you. You've had serious cases of rejection, instability, and your worst fears or insecurities played out over and over again at the emotional level. So what you really want, while it's beautiful, you're saying it's a luxury or it's no such thing or it's silly. So you give it not too much thought because it represents that fear of weakness. When it comes to my emotional self, 
I've had too many experiences to tell me I can't trust that level of connectivity or it's not possible for me. Maybe it is for other people, but not for me. Good luck for them, but that's not my gig. My gig is to work. My gig is to be known. My gig is to make a name for myself. That way I can never be dispersed. I can never be written off or I can never just be dislodged. I am connected to everything and everybody. Here is where the devil takes hold. The repetition of high anxiety fears. Because the bigger the emotional stake, the bigger the loss, right? Strength. Show me strength. Show me strength, please. But oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I can tell that that devil shoots his mouth off a lot, but it comes out in the form of anxious thoughts that are repetitious or repetitive. Excuse me, repetitive. <laughs> Thank you, stutter. That are repetitive. Absolutely. Creates blockage, confusion, emotional discord, and unhappiness. How come I always find myself in settling emotions or unhappy things? That's because you have not fully embraced what you really want and that what you really want is actually possible for you. Okay. Show me strength, show me strength, show me strength, show me strength. Show me strength, please. Show me strength, show me strength. Let's see if we can throw that devil out of the loop a little bit and get you some mental relief in there. Something. Something. King of Pentacles. Oh, I know you're resourceful, honey. Three cups. And then um, Leo had a similar combination, but for a kind of different output. Okay. Um, and I promise you I shuffle these cards many, many times. They were supposed to come out the way that they did. Uh, strength. You have a natural strength in you that says you know how to connect. You do. There's something here on the surface Whereas the King of Pentacles, it's actually quite easy for you to socially connect. I know, like I said, you are that Sag who makes sure that your name is in other people's mouths as a point of reference. This is where you shine. But your emotional connectivity doesn't really go beyond the Three of Cups. So while you get kind of hooked on the surface that this could be, some, excuse me, could be something potential of useful to you, that you might actually enjoy it, you don't take it deeper than that, do you? Your ability to make connections high. Your ability to use those connections for yourself personally in a way that says emotional fulfillment, low. You are that person who is very proud of what you are able to connect with and how frequently. You are that person who says, I keep myself open. What are you talking about? Uh huh. You keep yourself open with a cap, a limit. You have a self-imposed glass ceiling that says, if I keep it on the surface, where it's of practical value and resources, I can't lose. But then you're dissatisfied about why it doesn't go deeper. You want so much more. But on the output, you say, I'm fine where everything is. I'm awesome. Look at who I'm connected to. But where do they connect to you? Here. What's that connection that has ever punched you so hard in the heart you never forgot? Where is that allowed in your life? Why? Have you ever made room for it? Did you ever know you wanted an umbrella? Emotional resources that go beyond what you can do with it practically on the surface. I know what your strengths are. They're very simple. And they have served you well. You have made a master art form of the simplistic connections because you take them to many places in the 3D. Like I said, it's almost like you're saying you're too big to fail or you will not allow it. You will not allow yourself to be forgotten. You will make your mark just as long as no one else makes their mark on you, right? That's what it is to be touched by something bigger than yourself. Someone leaves a mark on you. And that mark either feels right and you want to make a whole life out of it or it's a bad mark and you don't ever try to do that again, right? I wonder who last tried to make their mark on you. And why does it put a sign in your heart that says it could have been so much more, but no. 
No. I see you continuing on in your strengths as you have done. I see your two of ones in the future. Hopefully the decisions you are comfortable with, because I see the decisions you are not comfortable with. Anything that gets too close. This is coming up for you under the full moon. I see it distinctly. I hope you spend more time with it, understanding it, and therefore understanding yourself better, not just your surface presentation. The one where that side is all scrubbed up and clean and they're ready to go. Presentation, 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 yeah? No, no, my friend. I want to know what you look like on a bad day. Does your t-shirt have holes in it? You forget to put your deodorant on? You're just shoving food into your mouth? Can't get out of bed? That's the Sag I want to see. The vulnerable Sag, not the presentation Sag, because you sharp as hell. What was that, CZ Top? Every girl crazy about a sharp-dressed man, woman? No. The vulnerable Sag, that's what I want to see. How do you know it's love? People ask me that all the time. How do you know it's love? The person who loves you wants to know you on your bad day, your worst days. Because that's as much as part of you as anything else. Okay. Let's see that two of wands, please. Ace of swords. There's a the truth. Five of cups. Regret. Nine of cups. Okay. There's some truth for you. Over the next 30 days, you're going to have some strong insights, my friend. Good, we need it. You're going to allow some of that uh, untapped emotional, uncomfortable experience wash through you as a strong thought. I want you to. Allow it through. It's, it, you can only be threatened by those kind of thoughts and feelings if you are indeed someone who's that closed off. Now, I can see where the devil has affected your decision-making when it comes to your more personable self. But this is a truth that can pass through because it doesn't, or it's not attached to your exterior world. So that means you can keep it to yourself and learn from it what you need to, which means it doesn't have to pass through the devil filters. Okay. It seems like the devil has the most say when it's time for you to make decisions that reflect on the outer world. But the devil doesn't seem to have so much say when you make decisions and when you reflect upon yourself, knowledge, insight, self-learning. Devil's not there so much. You have a clear crystal clear thought about five of cups emotional loss regret hauntings of the past uh, missed opportunities nine of cups that you say have taken from you you see this now without all the loud static the devil is static again it's repetition so therefore we don't think of it as the devil we think of it as just something we're used to or it's just part of who we are i just have an anxious mind or over here when it's just you talking to you, you seem to have some really clear thoughts. And you start asking yourself, okay, I'm a nine of pentacles, eight of pentacles. What am I like individually? Do I love myself, nine of cups? Do I understand what wish fulfillment is? And my decisions, how have they affected me to love myself or to not love myself? When it came time for me to prove not my worth, your worth is wonderful. I know you have that name that's in a lot of people's mouths. I see it. You prove your sense of everyday external 3D worth every day. What about how you prove it to yourself emotionally? That I am worth the love. I am worth feeling a little provoked in terms of these are my fears. But they shouldn't be fears. They should be actually what I want. Why am I so afraid of that? Do I love myself enough to see the truth of this and how I've made decisions that have led up to this point? What is wish fulfillment? And do I love myself enough to recognize it? To go beyond the level of surface of external connectivity and see myself as an individual person and what am I worth on the inside? Yes. Good stuff. It was all metaphor today. Your external world, just to be clear in case you didn't pick up on that, is wonderful. It's magnificent. That's not the influence for you over the next 30 days. Your influence for the next 30 days is entirely internal, and it needs to be. May that insight, it hits you. It comes soon. 
We need it. Your external world, <laughs> no, you're fine. That's a very bright, proudful spot for you. I don't blame you. Anyone who can make that level of connections and build themselves up and say, I need more, I need more. Ask yourself why and at what point is it enough for you? Is it because we're spending a lot of time overcompensating for the emotional world we have not allowed ourselves to create? Just FYI, I'm putting it out there. Okay. Okay. Let's do some Moonology Manifestation, please. Four sets. He's saying, I know, I know what your argument is. I know what your counter argument is. I connect with people so easily. Yeah, right here. Not like this. This is where the real work happens. Like I said, when you haven't taken that shower for three or four days, kind of smell. We're not wearing our best clothes. In fact, we wore the same sweatpants three or four days in a row now. We're kind of eating cereal out of the box. Watching the same shows and movies we have for years. Don't quite have the energy to cry. <laughs> but uh, feeling a sort of lethargic detachment. Like, what's next? Hmm. I need to get out there and prove myself again so I can feel normal again, right? No. I'm more interested in seeing you on that day. Right there. I hope you learn what you need to learn and see what you need to see. Cool. Your emotions, full moon and Aries. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where are we with that? Yes, we are technically in Aries season. Some of you might have felt a surge of frustration, mental anxiety. Like I said, frustration, anger. Okay. And then again, if you're uncomfortable with those kind of emotions and what they represent... I can see where, again, you default to 3D realities. I just need to shore myself up more. Okay? And that will go away. We need to cool our emotions. Look inward. Okay? There's that conflict. And if you have a spike of areas in your chart, you're familiar with the fight. That sense of fight. Uh, i got to push past this. Cool down. Clear your mind. That's what I'm saying. Last quarter moon in Gemini. Clear your mind. Absolutely. Right about here. That's where I see the devil stop being mouthy. But again, the devil seems to pop up the most when you try to reflect on what it is that you want externally. When you reflect internally, not so loud. So I want you to use that open opportunity of that absence to your advantage. You know, you will learn some remarkable things. New moon and Capricorn, step up and lead. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I want you to lead this for yourself. You can. I can see what your default mode is. I'm not comfortable. Shut it up. No, right here. The groom, husband, marriage, I know, it's in reverse, yeah, kind of like this. We don't feel, like even if you're part of relationships, it doesn't feel like your most emotionally satisfied self. That would suggest you would be open to the fullness of love and the spectrum that it offers. Some of you, it's just always shy or short of that, and it's a safety thing. You know, you find yourself settling in connections that make you feel safe and they don't make you feel too provoked and they don't make you feel too challenged and they don't feel, make you feel too emotionally immersed. You know what I'm saying? Not too demanding. Uh, and it will likely be practical in nature. It's just one of those things that's like, I don't feel deeply attached to this. I don't feel I'm deeply connected to this. I drive and I work and I drive and I work and it's for something. It's for something but I don't feel like I'm part of it in a deeper level. Yeah, I know why. I see why. Again, it's not a fault. Some of you feel like, even if you are a husband, that you are not quite one, and that you're married, but not quite. 
okay, there's something here about the lack of fulfillment in how we see ourselves. We're participating, but we're not. Let me put it this way. Even if you're not married, let's just say a groom in reverse, okay? And let's say you're a single man. Under your moon, this is what you ask for the most. A man or woman who is happily satisfied is in the reverse. I mean, the upright is what I meant. Someone who is detached from this, but still gives, suggests that in terms of reality, we have it together, the presentation's there, but we're not connected to the space that really allows us to fulfill our roles as groom, bride, husband, wife. Difference between having something and being connected to it. Big difference. Okay. Okay, the peacock and the sideways, we don't feel... We don't feel seen, even though you are seen. We don't feel cherished, even though you are deeply connected. You see what I'm saying? That's that emotional self. When the devil makes fear-based decisions for emotional selves, it's like we're there, but we're not there. We've created a whole life, but we don't feel deeply attached to it. It's like if I just have more wealth, if I have more status, if I have more visibility, I'll feel secure, right? in every way except inside. And that's what I want for you to change and reflect upon in this next 30 days. Okay, and then there's the old woman sadness. I, uh, I don't know that necessarily there's someone else in here with you, but it doesn't feel like it's a pairing, okay? It doesn't feel right. I'm saying some of you are connected to partners, but it's not here. It's here on the outside. One of those external-based decisions, not your internal-based decisions. We don't feel like a fulfilled groom or husband or partner, sex aside. And here we have the old woman, sadness, female. But it's external, everyone can see it. This is, this is someone who's over the middle age, I suppose. Doesn't have to be that particular demographic, but it's that sense where you don't have the fulfillment. Even if you have the the role of husband or wife, it doesn't, it's not fulfilling. And whom we are attached to is a reflection of this. Huh. Again, not an insult, guys. Those are the cards today. Okay. I see, I had that feeling though, because you don't, when somebody in their deepest hearts wants a full expanse, the full treatment, right? If you ever took your car and to get it professionally detailed, you can get the full detail. It costs the most, but hey, you get the best result inside and out. You, under your moon, say you want the full detail. Okay, so I as a reader could do that a couple, you're either single, because you said your autonomy is important to you, but I'm seeing it as status attached to your wealth, name, function. But uh, that means you're on your own. And you have not fully admitted to yourself the desire you have in your heart for the full detail. Or you're connected to someone and the desire is the same. I don't know which one you are, but you do. I don't feel like, I, I think some of you are in a role and you don't feel fulfilled by it. That's because you didn't attach to it in the deepest parts of you. The most authentic parts of you. The devil told you, don't connect like that emotionally. It's not safe. And we see where that leads us sometimes. Into another case of not safe. Not feeling secure. It's a problem with that mouthy guy. Okay. Things to think about. Okay. We have the uh, medallion of Gemini, but the the key word up front being intelligent. Of course you are. I can tell that you are resourceful, intelligent. You know how to connect. You do. You know how to build your resources. You know how to connect. I don't know how I know that. I just do. We have the letter Y. 
We have the camel. I know the conservation here. Also Earth, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. We have the Pegasus, that sense of masculine pride and freedom to take off, that sense of autonomy. If I just have more power, status, and visibility, I'll feel better. Okay? I don't blame you for that. It's not a fault. It just... That's what this particular side is experiencing. And then we have the seashell of cancer here. Um, it's in reverse, not listening to our feelings. And here we have your medallion, Sagittarius. Okay. Um, there you go. I hope this helped you. Put in the comments as you see fit. Take care. Be well.